we get into the word of God. Um, before I preach, allow me to greet uh, Mama. Uh, uh, Mama, Mama, I had this day. That's uh, the mother, the mother-in-law. Are you still healed? Come. Come. You can come, Mama. Let's see, let's hear your story. Come, let's hear your story. Give me a mic. How long was uh, Oh, tell us, first of all, what happened? What happened? Uh, good morning, church. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. What a privilege and honor to stand into the faithful congregation of God wow. and the powerful men of God beside me. Yes. <sighs> I'm short of words. Really, I wanted to come and testify, but the testimony cut time elapsed before I said a word. Wow. <laughs> and I said, oh, my time shall come, but God knows I'm grateful. Amen. Amen. <laughs> when I came... Um, here from Zimbabwe. My daughter-in-law invited me to your church, to our church, to the church of a living God. <laughs> ah, whose power to bless, save, and deliver is, is infinite. Amen. So, when I, I heard it's a healing service, I say, oh, that's my time in my season. And I won't let it pass by. I'll cry just like Blind but me us, and you will not pass me by. Amen. So God in his infinite mercy used his mantle. <laughs> the anointed man of God standing beside me. He touched me. <laughs> hey, and maybe I know definitely that power left him. Just as Jesus said, <laughs> somebody touched me. A very painful heel, this left heel here. It, uh, it was so painful that I would sweat down to my back. Like it, it is a deep cut uh, from a razor blade, a, a, like a laceration. I don't know how to explain it. The pain was so severe that when it starts paining, I had. Uh, what can I say about medication? It was a dispensary in my house. All efforts to get myself healed were in vain. But God, with him, nothing is impossible. Yes. That's why the word of God said, the mantles which were used by the men of God could heal the sick. He touched me. Amen. And I fell. And something left me. Whew. This God is so good. So for how God long? Of for, for, is a living for God. how long I was? I couldn't walk. I couldn't stand. It was so painful that I wouldn't even uh, desire it to my enemy, my worst enemy. <laughs> <laughs> I would feel sorry for him if he ever entered into that realm of pain. But this man of God, with his disciples, fought a good fight. Yes, it was a guerrilla warfare. Yes, <laughs> they fought the giant just like David said, no, we are conquerors, he is anointed. You are blessed, you people of God. I know. Why? Because uh, just like uh, some say, a prophet is not in honor. Don't despise this anointing. He's a wonderful man of God. Powerfully anointed man of God. 
Yes, he's not common. He's not ordinary. I saw him in the spiritual realm. He did great exploits. Just as the word of God says, with you I will do great exploits. His God is a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a story changer. And he's changed my story. From pain to... <laughs> you saw my steps? So for, for how long was the... Was, Ooh, was the this story? pain. I don't know. For almost three months. Three serious <laughs> months of pain, of torture. Uh, I was in the blasphemous of hell because <laughs> of pain. <laughs> but God found me. He pulled me. He used his anointed mantle of God. He so, wore so, his gloves of so, heaven. So how were you walking before? Ooh, it was like... everything. Take this medication. Put your feet in the hot water in the soil. And I said, even if I am Mazondo, <laughs> I think I'm cooked enough. I'm cooked enough. <laughs> the medication, it was a dispensary. But where human knowledge ends, where medicine and science ends, that's where God begins. Oh. And his word says he heals all diseases. I consider myself lucky. I consider myself loved by God. Why? Because it's like I am a Naman. I went to Elisha, and here I'm born again. Blood was cleansed and made the world because of his love. Yes, because of his goodness. God used this mantle of God. This arena is an arena of liberty. You will never walk here and come back the same. Mm. Yes. Believe me when I tell you that you have a living God here. Mm. You have a transformer, a story changer here. A blessed Savior is here. And he's still using his men of God in a mighty way. And continue, I pray that you will not faint in your spiritual walk with the Lord. Yes. I know. The word of God said, a thorn in my flesh was given in order for me not to be proud. So, I glorify God that because of his love, he brought me here and changed me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Abba Father, because of your grace, your goodness and mercy, which shall follow me all the days of my life. Yes, my life shall never remain the same again because of my Christ. Good morning. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I give glory. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Mama. God bless you. Uh, isn't God good? God is a good God. Acts chapter 2. Verse 24. Next is, it is your story. Mm. Let's start it from 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. 23. Him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands and have crucified and put to death. Let's continue. Whom God raised, 
having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is at my right. Not be shaken. Therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh will not also in decay. Therefore, my, okay, for, is that, um, go to verse 27. All right, continue. There's a verse I want. Where is my verse? Let me just check it, the one I specifically want. That therefore this Jesus has been made, anyone who is there you can check for me, has been made Lord and Savior. 36. Oh, why did I write 26? 36, okay. Let's go, 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus. The, the word, the name Jesus was given to speak to his humanity. Whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. This man, Jesus, after death, burial, and resurrection, was made Lord and Christ. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 1. We are talking about the Lordship of Jesus. Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. Verse 2. Which he promised through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Verse 3. Concerning, the gospel is concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Say, our Lord. Lord. Who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Put the Amplified on that verse, verse 4. As to his divine nature, according to the spirit of holiness, was openly designated to be the son of God with the power in a triumphant and miraculous way by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord. One day, somebody phoned me and said, uh, my husband is being tormented. Uh, it's, a, it's an issue of fits. And it's getting very bad. Uh, then I said, okay, come on Tuesday. So the person said to me, okay, we are coming. So the day before, she phones and she says, uh, will you be having people to help you to 
subdue the demons. Um, I said, uh, no, just to come. Okay. The, the morning when they were supposed to come, she phones again. Man of God, should we bring people to, <laughs> to hold this man? Uh, or you have people who hold and take some and subdue him? I said, why? He said, oh, he, he, he can be very violent. So violent that the, the last deliverance service we went, we, we carried four. The evangelist had five. <laughs> and still, we were not able to control. I'm telling you this story for a reason. It, is, it has everything to do with the teaching that I'm doing now. I said, no, don't worry, come. So, eventually they came, they entered the door, they see a very small, small man seated here alone. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> I think in the, you know, in the mind, she actually said, I said, this man is a joke. <coughs> now, um, <laughs> that's one story. <coughs> now, when you don't know the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you will not, you, you will struggle in this life and put the devil where he does not belong. Amen. You will give the devil a place that he does not, is not supposed to have. I hope I will get this very clear across to you. I hear people sometimes come, a person sits in front of me and the person says, man of God, I really need serious deliverance. And I say, from what? Like one said to me, ah, there are marine spirits, there are certain, uh, uh, and the way I've manifested, they've said I, it's satanism. They have said it's, uh, you know, these big demonic names, now, it's okay, but a lot of this talk, by the time the person is coming to sit talking like that, there is a problem already. Amen. He has now given the devil a place in their life where the devil looks so big and very powerful. Uh, like that, uh, th that guy, I mean, don't, don't think it was just the wife talking, the, guy, the wife would phone, the guy is there. So he, he's also saying, uh, mine is a very serious one. They really need a lot of men, people to, to, to catch me as I will be prayed for. How does this kind of thinking develop? <laughs> to a point where you believe your demon They cannot control mine. It's, be, it's a serious demon on me. When I hear such things, I know you don't understand the lordship of Jesus. Why are you saying that? Because when you understand the, this teaching that I'm doing, I will take my time until you get it. When you understand this teaching, you will be able to put the devil where he belongs. In your life, 
in your heart, in your understanding. Let me reiterate again for to give you understanding of why this is necessary. The word Lord means honor in simple terms. That's why when you say land Lord, you are saying this person owns a piece of land. Isn't it? Yes. They have purchased it. It belongs to them. They have a title over it. And therefore, land, Lord. Colossians 1, 16 and 17. Colossians 1, 16 and 17. Colossians 1, 16. For by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created and exist through him, that is by his activity and for him. Amen. Do you realize what the word of God is telling you there? Yeah. There is someone who created everything that you have, that, that was ever created. Whether that thing is visible or invisible, whether that thing is a throne or a principality, a power, whether that thing is angels or whether that thing is demons. The devil never created a thing. All he did was to rebel and pervert what God created. So, technically, the owner of everything, the Lord of all things, is God himself. Elohim. After he had created angels, and every other realm, thrones and dominions, he now comes and he creates a human being. And he says, let us create men in our own image, in our likeness. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make a man in our image according to our likeness. Can we put it in the New King James? Shorter to read. Now look at this statement. Let us make in our, man our own image according to our likeness. This statement that gave man the lordship over the earth is that statement. Let them have dominion. When God spoke, when he said, let them have dominion, it was a transfer of lordship from God, not on, on many to every territory in existence, no, but to the earth. Right. So, he gave lordship to men. It's like a man who gives a lease agreement to a tenant. Now man was in charge. And guess what? When man was in charge, the Lord made sure he was in charge because he carried the nature of God himself. Remember, after the creation of man, man was like God, carrying the nature of the Father. 
And the nature of God is called life. He carries life. And he gave life to men. But God knew that outside there, there was someone who carried a totally different nature. And that nature, he called it death. And now, how did the devil get the nature of death? By rebelling against God. By being disobedient to God. The Bible says, in him was found iniquity. Right? A nature contrary to God. Amen. So when God said, the day you eat of this tree, Amen. you shall surely die. He knew, if you disobey my command, you are taking the nature of someone out there. You will be like him. You would have become like him, you know, disobeying me. So you are as like him. And God knew men would not disobey without the influence of that. And for sure, Satan appeared, influenced men, and men obeyed. The Bible says, whom you obey becomes your master. The moment Men obeyed the devil. Whom you obey becomes your master. And your master owns what you own. So that's how the devil took ownership of the earth. When you understand that transaction, Now, when we talk about the fall of men, I know some of you, you hear these terms being used in the Bible. Justification, adoption, reconciliation, um, what others, whatever. You know, propitiation, whatever. All those terms are trying to Correct what happened at the fall. Is the Bible trying to tell you what it is that, for example, the number one problem when men fell was that now a human being had a nature contrary to God. A nature of the devil. In other words, when men sinned, he actually got born again, but with a nature not of God. Now, when God was looking at a man, the reason why he separated himself from the man was the nature that was in the man. Now, when God, when that happened, so apart from the change in the nature, that transaction also put the devil in charge of the human being. Because now, the human being had the nature of the devil. And now the devil became the master. If you want a human being to understand salvation, you have to address these bits and pieces. What we have usually presented to people is the forgiveness of sins. To tell them God will be forgiving your sins. It's okay, you know. But if you are to understand the full package, we have got to visit all those words that you find in the Bible, some of which you don't like to hear, because, to pronounce, because they sound very difficult to pronounce. For example, when men sinned, God was very angry. What anger? Anger towards sin. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 1, that the wrath of God, the anger of God, is against all humanity because of their sins and continual sinning. So, there was the anger of God against the sin, which had to be what? Appeased. It's part of the salvation package. Something had to be done 
to appease that anger of God. That's why we have the word called propitiation. What is propitiation? It's a, simple, it's a big word to simply say appeasing the anger of God. Okay? So, somebody had to be a substitute to appease the anger. Somebody had to carry the wrath, the anger of God. That's why Jesus went through all the punishment. But in carrying all that punishment, he also made available the capacity now to be made right with God. That's where now things like reconciliation come in. Why? Because now that somebody has been punished, God can now extend and can now accept men back. That's reconciliation. Now the wrath of God has been removed. Men can now come back. Men has now been reconciled to God. Right? Now God can now accept men back in his presence. But before he can do that, he cannot accept men with his nature, the nature of the devil. Which means now God has a right because of what Jesus has done to now change the nature of a human being. That's where justification comes in. Now you are going to be made just as if you never sinned. Now God, by his power, now comes to supplant, to remove the nature of the devil by putting his own life and nature in a human being. Justification. Right? But I didn't finish all the terms because now we can go to adoption where he, needs now, he has now brought you back into the family. You are now part of the family of God and there are benefits. There are many terms that, that, that are there. I will not go into that. I have just tried to show you that if you don't understand part of these things, you can actually be missing out on something that is already there. So, the concept of the lordship of Jesus comes to address an issue where the fall of Adam made us slaves to the devil. So we went under the slavery of the enemy. Now, when we talk about the lordship of Jesus, it's an exchange to change from one master to another master. That changes the whole equation when you understand what happened at salvation. Because all this thing of you, you know, exalting the devil and fearing him and fearing demons and fear, it all it's an issue of do you really understand what happened in terms of this lordship issue? Did you understand it? Colossians 1, 13. Can you put Amplified? Colossians 1.13 He has rescued us and has drawn us to himself. From where? From the dominion rulership of darkness. Are we together? Which means before you are born again, you are under a dominion. You are under control. You are under an authority. It's the authority of darkness. And he has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. That's massive.
Because I always use this example. I'll repeat it. Do I have a, do I have a, a, a young child here? Grade five, six, seven, one, somewhere. Anyone? You come. Run like a sports person. Find a grade what? Seven. What school? GP prep. GP. GP prep. GP prep. Right. Is there another school that you really like where you want to go? Yes. What is the name of the school? Redham. Huh? Redham High. Your parents are hearing? Redham High School. Redham High School. Yes. Is it the Redham? Yes. It's in Bedford. Oh, I know that one, close to the mall. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's a good school. I know that one. Yeah, yes. <laughs> right. So, do you have a principal where you are? So this young man is under authority, where he is. And the parents are also under that authority. Because when they phone, they go. When they send the school fees demanded, they pay. So they are under authority. There is a dominion that they are submitting to. Then next year, January, I'm prophesying. We transfer you. <laughs> we prophesy. We transfer you to Redem. Redem. That's January. So, that will be a new headmaster, new principal. New school rules. Are we together? Okay, remain here. But come March, Redam uh, uh, GP Prep sends him a report card that says, You have failed school, you are not performing well. Come end of January, GB Prep is still sending him a demand for school fees. What are you going to do? Someone says, you know, another one? Huh? What? What? Oh, you paid the fees. Oh. She's going to pay, our child is at Redham, and she's still going to pay Jeep because they have demanded. She's now saying no. She said, okay, I, 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 think it's, I think it's now getting somewhere. We are now getting somewhere. Because I also know here there are people who are still paying school fees to prep, to Jeep prep here. I know, I know they are there right now. They are still paying school fees to Jeep prep here in this, in this sitting here where we are sitting. There are some people who are still read, who, who are still having headaches with a report from JP Prep when the child is at Redham. Transferred. And yet you are still suffering from what is still coming from where? From here. Because what you don't realize is when you were here, there was a principle, there was a reason for them to make a demand. I was still under their control. I had voluntarily gone there to submit and say, take my child, I, will, I want him to learn here. Now I went again and said, give me transfer. I am now going where I found a better school, better principal, better place. Now I take my child and I take him to now read them and now he's here. Why should I be still be looking back? Are you hearing what I'm telling you here? Are you understanding? You can see it, it's okay. Because this is the problem. He has rescued us and drawn us to himself. 
from the dominion of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. Why is a report card from the kingdom of darkness still giving you a sleepless night? People don't know. People don't know. Romans 10 verse 8. <coughs> Romans 10 verse 8. But what does it say? The word is in you. In your mouth and in your heart. That is the word, the message of, on the basis of faith, which we preach. Next. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognizing his power, authority, and majesty as God, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will. It's not negotiable. It's not probability. It's a certainty. When a person is coming to receive Jesus and they stand there, you are now making them a prayer. <laughs> you don't know how powerful that thing is. When they have not done that prayer, they are still in the kingdom of darkness. They are under the dominion of Satan. They are having allegiance to pay there. But the moment they open their mouth, which the devil cannot stop, and they have believed in their heart, acknowledging his power, dominion, and authority. And he, the person says, Jesus is now Lord over my life. That statement, that prayer, is a transfer letter with unquestionable credentials signed by heaven. And God puts his stamp that this one has now moved from kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Okay. In case someone doesn't believe. John chapter 5 verse 24. John 5 24. John 5 24. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, the person who hears my word, the one who hears my message, and believes and trusts in him who sent me, has, possesses now eternal life. That is, eternal life actually begins, the believer is transformed. And it does not come into judgment and condemnation, but it has passed over from where? From where? From death to where? Are, are those things similar? You are passing from death. Do you know why eternal life does that? When we say eternal life, it's the very life of God. The word life there is his way. Which means speaks so to the God kind of life. When that life comes in your dead spirit, that life supplants the nature of the devil. And you are made a child of God. You now have a new nature. And with the new nature, you can no longer be associated with the devil. And you have passed from judgment. What does that mean? Judgment for condemnation. You are no longer going to be judged to be condemned. Okay. Some need a few more. Acts chapter, eight, Acts chapter 26, verse 17 to 18. Acts 
This is Paul when he was being sent as a preacher. Choosing for yourself and rescuing from the Jewish people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you. To open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light. That's the power of salvation. That's the power of the gospel. It turns you from darkness to light. There is no middle ground there. When you have darkness, just put on light. You don't have to ask, where did the darkness go? It just goes and disappears because light and darkness do not have a relationship. The gospel has the power to move you from darkness to light. From the power of Satan to God. Are you telling me that the two are related? From the power of Satan. Now you are in the power of God. And you still say, my, my, my demon is very big. Which, who, who is now controlling you? Which power are you under? Where you are still so believing, so fearing the devil and what he can do on you so much. Why? When you know that when I said Jesus is Lord, somebody lost lordship over me. You will know that the devil, the devil and his demons have no power over your life. The devil and his demons have no reason to make a single claim on you. Ah, I voted myself out of his kingdom with my mouth. Nothing of his is supposed to still follow my life. He has no claim over me. Why? I said bye bye to his kingdom from darkness to light. So, why are you still in darkness? He has rescued us. Some of you, I was explaining when I was in Eastern Cape, this will be my last point, and I, pray, I quit for today. I was explaining in Eastern Cape that in the kingdom there are two truths and if you don't know, if you don't understand this, you miss it all the time. There is the legal truth and the vital truth. Legal truth means what God has established in the spirit. It cannot be changed. It cannot be reversed. For example, right now, every man out there and here is saved. It's a legal truth. Because nobody out there, Jesus died for them. No, Jesus is going to die again. Le God has paid for that sinner out there who is still bound, drinking, prostituting. Jesus died for them. As far as God is, is concerned, that transaction for their salvation finished, done. They are saved. But that does not translate to be vital truth until they hear, believe, and accept. Now, it's only when they hear, believe, accept that the legal truth is changed from legal truth to vital truth. And it, then now, they know, oh, now I am saved. No, there were people who were being saved 2,000 years ago, the same Jesus. You, were, you are now 48, you are being saved at 48. You were already saved by the time you were born. But it's just that you didn't have the, the capacity to translate the legal truth to vital truth. So, because someone is sitting, he says, Pastor, I don't know how I'm suffering. When you say, I'm rescued. I'm rescued. When I'm still tormented. When I'm still seeing demons every night. Okay, let me tell you where the problem is. There's no more Jesus who's going to die for your deliverance. There's no, no, no new Jesus. No new. <laughs> and some of you, 
you are thinking, I think I really need a very powerful man of God. A very, very anointed one. I'll tell you, <laughs> what I am telling you can liberate you better than a hand from a man of God. Because when you understand what I am telling you, you walk free on the devil. Why? Because you know what is going to happen? All that is there right now, I will illustrate, I've, maybe I've used it, this example here before. I say, if right now, President Ramaphosa Matamela Ramaphosa, a serial, signs a paper declaring freedom for a prisoner in Toyando, this afternoon, he signs it. Question, is the prisoner free? Legally, the prisoner is what? Free. free. Question is, when will the message get to the person? Are you seeing where the problem is? Yeah. So in the register of the law of the land, the person is what? Free. But the person is still going to spend tonight in prison with a 10-year sentence hanging over his head. Worrying. Hey, 10 years. Maybe I'll even die here. And tonight, the prisoner is going to eat prison food. And tonight, the prisoner is going to sleep on prison bed. You wake up tomorrow morning sulking because he's still in prison. Until maybe tomorrow someone is going to spend the whole day driving, going there. Because this one does not go by email. It's a real document that is to be delivered in person. They get there. 4 p.m. tomorrow. The, the, the guy has already saved the punishment, you know, working with other prisoners the whole day. <laughs> then a letter gets to the prison warden and says, we are here for Mr. X. Uh, the president has sent us with this good news for him that he is released from prison. And as they go to the, you know, to the cell, the guy is presented with the letter. A few things can happen there. The guy can choose to believe what is on this document. And if he believes, I'll tell you what happens. Because he may not believe. He will say, ah, no, you, you, what kind of joke is this? Now You are starting now. No. Which means he may need the counselors to come, psychologists, to cancel. For the next two days, you are trying to cancel him to come out of the cell. And yet he's eating prison food and sleeping on the prison bed. Those two days more. And yet he was released when? Three days ago. Then he believes it after. Okay, if the guy chooses to believe, the very moment he hears the message, he says, what? So I'm free. Hey, do you know what? It doesn't matter. He's still in the prison. He can see prison walls. He can see prison bed. He's wearing prison clothes. But already he is rejoicing. Why is he dancing? Because he knows it's a matter of time. The prison clothes are off me. This bed I am beating it bye bye. Because I know that I am free at last. Free at last. Free at last. Irrespective of what I am still seeing, I know I am free. Not because of what I see, because of what I have heard and believed. Some of you right now, your problem is just a small headache. I thought the deliverance week helped me. I am still not helped. You are looking at the walls around you. You did not believe the messengers. Paul, the uh, elder, you know, all this elder, we were, were talking and they were fearing here, talking and talking, trying to convince you that you are now free. You can walk out on you can walk on the devil, but you are still there saying, uh, no, as long as I see, look, I'm still in prison. Look at what I am still wearing. No, it's not about where you are, what you are wearing. It's not about what you are, where you are. What, now, when you know the truth, 
You just say, I am now walking on the devil. I am going out of this prison. Why? Because I am free, 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 free. Stand on your feet. You are transferred <laughs> from the dominion of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. The devil is a liar. He cannot bind you and keep you in that prison. Jesus. That devil is a bad devil. After a powerful deliverance and you are prayed for, he will still bring that bad dream. And they say, oh, I thought I was delivered. Oh. If you know what, if you know this truth, you wake up, you laugh, and you say, Devil, that was yesterday. Don't bring your nonsense here. I am transferred. I am free. Do it twice. You will stop. You will stop. You are healed. And the same pain tries to come back. You declare by his stripes, I was healed. It doesn't say you will be healed. It says you were healed. So if you were, you are. Huh? If you were, you were, you was. Don't know. Lift your hands and thank Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. Mako da lipa hasoda glatira bahando jante gleti kahabano shiata. Thank you, Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Worship him and thank him. Thank you, Lord. That's why the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You are still suffering what your sisters are suffering. Who don't know Jesus. Check if Jesus is Lord. You are still being followed by familiar spirits that follow your bloodline. Check if you were transferred. Free at last. Free at last. I'm free. The devil is a liar. He can't stop it. If you couldn't stop Jesus in the grave, he cannot stop your freedom. Yes. You will not follow the script your family has followed. You will not die of that curse. You will not die of that poverty. You will not die of that sickness. You are checking out right now out of that bloodline, I command you to be set free, delivered totally in the name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. When you say those words, say them with a the conviction this time. Jesus is Lord. Can you say after me? Jesus is Lord. The devil cannot stop it. His Lord. I have a new owner and a new management. <laughs> the devil is in trouble. <laughs> and a new management. Kataya mando kosoko toko robo shikata. Kantara bakasata ya mando koshiata. Kareta kaya bahato shikata. I feel the anointing for liberty in the house. T Today, I'm not laying hands on anyone. I want you to be delivered by believing the word of God. 
Declare your freedom under new management. Free! Jesus is Lord. 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 The devil is a liar. Karabasataya mando koshiata.